Sablaki, the executive director of the Jamaica Bay Rockaway Parks Conservancy. We're here at Sunset Cove in Broad Channel, Queens. Um, this site was for decades used as a place where they dump boats. Um, illegal fill happened on this site, and thankfully the city took over this property and has created a wonderful park here called Sunset Cove due to the effort of local residents um, here in Broad Channel. And today we're starting restoration of this site. Hi, I'm Don Reapy, director of the Northeast Chapter of the American Literal Society, also the designated Jamaica Bay Guardian. I'm here today with the Jamaica Bay Restoration Corps. So today we're planting what is called high marsh. As we go down in elevation, an area that gets flooded more frequently with each tide, we're going to be planting almost entirely Spartina alterniflora, which is the salt marsh cord grass that you'll see out here ringing the bay. And those plants are the lifeblood of this bay. After Hurricane Sandy, especially here in Broad Channel, a community so impacted by the storm, um, we're looking for more resilient type of development, especially on our edge and in our parks. And here at Sunset Cove, we're doing just that. So in partnership with New York City Parks and local organizations like Jamaica Bay Eco Watchers and the American Littoral Society, we're restoring this site uh, to create a more resilient edge with plantings but also a berm that will protect the community from some local flooding. And the plantings will also um, limit erosion over time and create new habitat for wildlife. There's a tremendous amount of studies now showing the value that these wetlands have uh, in terms of storms. Attenuation value uh, for, for storm waves, uh, the bigger picture of climate change, uh, like we said, with uh, carbon offsets. Uh, and then, you know, as, as local people who are in and out of uh, the bay all the time, the amount of, uh, you know, impact to the marine environment. You know, so it's low tide now. At high tide, we're already seeing schools of fish coming in, the birds are feeding on them, horseshoe crabs are in here, the turtles being here, so it has a huge benefit. So what's, what what's happened here is this thing is going so good. It's going so quick and so good, beyond our expectations, that uh, we ran out of plans for well, what we know we were going to do today. And we got people coming tomorrow also, so we have to save some for them tomorrow to do theirs. But you see the amount of people here today. We have five times this amount coming two weekends from now. So you can imagine what this is going to be like an assembly line. So uh, this this is it for today. We're, we're, we're done in, in one third the time that we thought. Oh, wow. Look at this. That's cool, look at these ducks in there. Whoa, that's, those are long-tailed ducks. That is incredible. These duck species usually are found offshore. So they came right in here, that's amazing. When this is all done, we're gonna have an eco dock right here, where kids are gonna come down and do oyster restoration in this cove walk in and around the wetlands, and on the far side of this cove will be a boardwalk that will take them out over the water so they could actually experience it as the tide comes in and out. Hopefully in, in another 10 years or so, this will be a flourishing marsh. It's important to engage communities in projects like this. Important for not only them, for the park. It shows how a park like this could be resilient, how the community is resilient, and how a place like this is really a part of them. Um, so creating that sense of stewardship in local land is really important. We're here. We're planting upland shrubs here. So this is beech plum and uh, bayberry. Two really nice upland plants that have berries, fruit for, for birds and wildlife, beautiful flowers in springtime. Everybody take a plant. Hiring these students matters, uh, matters to them. It's their future. You know, this bay is just one little part of this planet that uh, they can take an interest in and learn about the environment, ecology, and hopefully translate and into policies for the future for protecting the planet. We can also have them start 
know, we have some serious issues ahead of us the next 50 years or so with sea level rise, global warming and the like. So uh, it's up to young people to get more involved in this and find out ways for helping stop this. There's nothing like getting them you know, off the tablets, off the phone, uh, phones, and, and, and off the computer screens, and out here. And what happens is when they start getting their hands dirty and doing something, inevitably the questions arise. You know, well, why are we doing that? What is this? And then they'll see, you know, either a horseshoe crab or a bird or the osprey over there. So the value to getting the kids out is uh, tremendous. Are we going to have future environmentalists? You know, if we don't get them out into the parks in this type of activity and they're strictly doing their virtual thing, is there going to be people who are willing to be environmentalists uh, and therefore you know, willing to fund and take care of our parks and our environment? When I bring the kids out in our small way down here for different projects, I definitely see that connection with the environment. coming out here every year with my team and this used to be just a sandbar and uh, this entire habitat has been reconstructed again. Just today we've seen horseshoe crabs, baby horseshoe crabs, ospreys. I love the fact that we're contributing and having this here for, for future generations. Hi, I'm Don Rippey, the Jamaica Bay Guardian and Director of the Northeast Chapter of the American Literal Society. And I'm Alex Sablocki, the Executive Director of the Jamaica Bay Rockaway Parks Conservancy. For the past 20 years, groups like ours have been protecting and restoring habitats in and around Jamaica Bay. But a lot more needs to be done, and we could use your help. Consider volunteering to help us improve the Bay. As nonprofit organizations, we are grateful for any monetary contributions you can make to help us in these efforts. Finally, we invite you to share this video with your friends. And we invite everyone to come down to the bay and explore the world of wonders that we have right here in our own backyard. Together we can protect and restore Jamaica Bay.